Father, and live in the sunshine, and will understand it all by and by. His Father along will know all about it, and Father along will understand why. So cheer up, my brother, and live in the sunshine, cause we'll understand this all by and by. Next before our scripture reading and prayer will be 602. 602. Sweet by and by. This one's been on my heart for, for a minute, so I'm really glad. Uh, 602, sweet by and by. You have it? Say amen. Let us sing. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melody of songs of the blessed. And our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise. For the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hollow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we'll meet on that beautiful shore. Scripture reading this morning will be coming from John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. We'll read it from the New King James Version. So John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. If you all have it, say amen. And the music follows. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is 
and to Richmond by the sheep gate and fold, which is called in Hebrew Kisera, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, and paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went and stirred up the water, and whosoever stepped in first up to the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity of 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered and said, answered to him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Let's go to the Lord for prayer. Let us pray. Do Lord, we come to you, first of all, asking for your forgiveness of sins, those sins we realize and those sins we may not realize, so that our hearts are right and pure as we commence this service. We pray that you would be with us as we go through this service and that the things that we're doing here are both pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray that you will be with your man service, Brother Booker, as he comes forward, that he will have ready recollection of the things he's studied, so that he will produce your word out here bold, truth, honestly, filled with the Spirit so that souls can be brought to you. We pray that you will be with those who may be in transit here, that you will allow them to get here safely. We pray once again that everything we do here is done in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our next hymn of the morning will be 798. Yield not to temptation. 798. Yield not to temptation. Seven, nine, eight. If you have it, say amen. Let us sing. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Find manfully on word dark passion subdue. Look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. So why don't you ask the Savior to help you? Comfort, strengthen, and keep you, and he is willing to aid you, and he will carry you through. Shun evil companions that language disdain. God's name hold in reverence, nor take it in vain. Be thoughtful and earnest, kind, hearted and true. Look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. So why don't you ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you, and he is willing to help you. My Jesus will carry you through. To him that o'er 
Unless God giveth a crown, through faith we shall conquer. Though often cast down, He who is our Savior, our strength will renew. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. So why don't you ask the Savior to help you and comfort, strengthen, and keep you? And he is willing to aid you. You know Jesus will carry you through. Before our message comes before us, I had worked on this for a few days now, and I really wanted to do this medley. So, if you'll follow me, we will start with hymn 820, He Bore It All. Then, we will continue into one, the first verse of 270. 274 and we'll probably need a bookmark for this and then we're going to end it with 826 when the Savior calls so he bore it all so I have found an, I found a friend in Jesus followed by when the Savior calls everybody understand all right, let us sing. My precious Savior suffered pain and agony. He bore it all that I might live. He broke the bonds of sin and set the captives free. He bore it all that I might live. In his presence live. He bore it all that I may see his shining face. He bore it all that I might live. Content to die, but Jesus freely took my place. He bore it all that I might live in his presence. Live. I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He is ne never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I do my faith and do his blessed will. Oh, all around about me, I have nothing now to fear. He's my this of ten thousand to my soul. And I found, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, your call, I will answer when he calls for me. I will hear when the Savior calls. I will answer. I'll be somewhere just listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere just listening for my name. Yes, for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere just listening for my my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere just listening Sing for my, my name. name. Yes, for my name. I'll, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere just listening for my name. 
If my robe is white when he calls me, if my robe is white, I will hear him. If my robe is white when he calls me, I'll be somewhere just listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere just listening for my name. Yes, for my name. And I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Let us all say amen. Let us all say amen again. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. God is good. We're so thankful uh, for the spirit uh, of Brother Joel continuing to get better and better. Some folks say gooder and gooder. Practice makes perfect. Am I right about it? We're thankful that he and other song leaders and all of our brothers uh, who stand in the gap to carry out the Lord's worship service uh, each and every Lord's Day Sunday. We appreciate that uh, so very, very much. Missed you, uh, Suitland. I ain't hear nobody say miss you, Brother Booker. Y'all know how I am. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm uh, 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 needy. Brother Riddick, I'm needy. I'm very affectionate. I like hugging. I like loving. I like talking and laughing. I, I like that. I, I need people. I feed off of people energy. I, I do. I do. And, and I miss you. And, and if you didn't miss me, that's okay. I still miss you. I love you. If ain't nobody told you today that they love you, Brother Booker does. And ain't nothing you can do about it. I love you. And I ain't even put on there like some of y'all in spite of. I ain't put that on there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I just love you. Some of y'all say, I love you, but in spite of. No, I just love you. That all right? New day. Y'all might well say amen. Uh, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow's not promised. Today we have is today. So we must make the best of today while we have it. And so, so really love you, really miss you. And I'm thankful that God uh, allowed us once again to travel uh, the distance. Y'all keep praying that that distance will become shorter. Y'all might well say, man, soon as y'all, why y'all ain't shouting this morning? I'm shouting. That distance become, they'll get it in a minute, shorter and shorter as the church continues to grow higher and higher. Is that okay? I, I'm just so thankful. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, 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 I'm peacock proud. I am. Every peacock has a tail, and if you ain't showing your tail, then something wrong with you. I'm just, okay, I'm gonna get to my lesson. I'm gonna get to my lesson. It's okay. We we in the church. We can have fun. We can have. Can we have fun? If I can't come to the church house and love and fellowship and have fun, where else I can go? I had all the fun out there that I could have. They were telling me to get out too. I was getting on their nerves. The thing about it is y'all can't put me out to church. Let the redeem. Is that okay? Say so. Good to see you. Once again, thankful for our brothers. Those who are here in our presence here in the audience and that are visiting with us, I just do want you to know, and I know it's a traditional saying, but from Suitland, we really mean it. You are honored guests. Uh, we're thankful that you decided to stop in and be with us on this Lord's Day. And if you're here, make sure that we have your contact information so we can reach out to you and just to say hello sometimes and invite you to Bible studies and just to visit with you. So we appreciate you being here and those uh, who uh, invited you. And as I started saying a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to ask you, who'd you invite? Who'd you invite? Let me uh, give you a little nugget. We know Central Church of Christ. We ain't trying to be like no church now. I can say that online and in here. But I was told, I was told that Brother Fouts, 
I was told that Brother Fowler would say when he greeted you, who did you invite? That was one of his strategies and methods. Who did you invite? If we don't invite people to the Lord's service, how will they hear the gospel being preached? I know we have radio and TV, but it's nothing like inviting them to your home, to the service, so they can hear the word of God preached, so they can see the fellowship of the Lord's church. They can feel the love that we have for them. So who'd you invite? Who'd you invite? Now, that doesn't mean if they didn't decide to come that you didn't invite them. Because I guarantee you that they're inviting you. Now we got to come up with a reason and answer why we can't go. It ain't that we can't go. It's that we are commanded to meet with God where God plays salvation. And that's in his church. And it's okay for us to share with people the truth in love. This is why I cannot worship with you. But let's sit down and have a study. Are y'all, is that okay? So who'd you invite? I'm going to ask you, who'd you invite? We want to continue and invite. It's an open invitation to come and be with us at the Suitland Road Church of Christ. For those of you who are li- online, we welcome you as well to be with the Suitland Road Church of Christ. And if you don't know where we're at, we're at 4815 Suitland Road, right here in the midst, in the heart of Suitland. And I know that there are other buildings and other organizations and other marquees and other churches, but there's only one church whereby Christ placed salvation. And if you want to sit down and have a study with me or the brothers or the members here, please, we invite you to come and study the scriptures and let God have the final word. Is that okay? Is that all right? So I just want to invite all to come out. Come see a church. Come see a group of people. Come see a man that will just simply help you and study with you and open unto you the word of God. Is that okay? That's an open, open, open invitation. All right, all right. Time to go to work. Is all right? Time to go to work. Meet me back over into the uh, book of John. I, I know some have said, well, Brother Booker, we've been on this uh, for some time. Even uh, the sun that I was out, we've been in this particular uh, uh, passage of Scripture. We had a series of lessons, and, uh, and, and I wanted to condense it down. We're on the final or the last uh, lesson of this series of lessons, and there's a lot of, a lot of meat. A lot of preachers preach from this text. Uh, and there's just a lot of, of understanding and growth. And, and what I thought I would do is, is as uh, uh, the church and, 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 and us, we came together and, and we, we agreed and married ourselves together. Uh, it, is, it is just uh, uh, apropos, if you will, or just pertinent uh, that uh, uh, myself as, as a minister make sure that I try to do the best that I can to, to look at the church as a whole and to... Uh, be able uh, to not only uh, uh, represent God, but represent Suitman, and to do all that I can to assist and to help and encourage and edify each and every member and those who are visiting with us to know that there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. Is that okay? And, and, and I know that we are all at different stages of our walk uh, uh, in Christ, if you will, or our walk in life. Uh, and we're all at a, fair, uh, at a certain place of our understanding of the Word of God. But uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, but a man born of a woman is of a what? Few days and what? Many are troubles. And if you live in this, in this world, you're going to face some troubles. You're going to face some ups. You're going to face some downs. You're going to be on the mountaintop on some days, but then there's some days you're going to spend some time in the valley. There's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some things that are going to come up that you're going to need the help of Jesus. And so as we move forward as a people, as a habitation of God's people here at Suitland, we just want to just cover some areas and continue to move forward. You know, sometimes reading the Bible is like eating fish. Eat the meat, spit out the bone. Y'all thought I was going to say chicken, right? 
because some of us eat chicken bones. Some of us, y'all, thank you, honey, for that, because some of us can say the marrow is the best part. It's good. <laughs> but my point being is, as we move forward, we, we wanted to just look at some areas that I believe that is worth looking at and moving forward. Is that all right? And so we've been here, we've been studying this particular story, this particular scripture here found in John chapter 5. And, and, and I thought I, I would just uh, have a conversation. Preaching, but just a conversation. Is that all right? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor or neighbor, it's my season. Say to them, today is the day that I will face my giant. Today is the day that I will tell myself the truth. Today is the day that I will let the word of God heal my broken spirit and order my steps. In their book, Telling Yourself the Truth, Dr. William Bacchus, Bacchus founder of the Center for Christian Psycho Psychological Services in Marie Chapman, explains this. Misbeliefs are a direct cause of emotional turmoil, maladaptive behavior, and most so-called mental illnesses. Misbeliefs are the cause of destructive behavior in which people persist engaging in, watch this, even when they are fully aware that it is harmful to them. This is why so many people keep repeating the same old behaviors because misbeliefs contain some shred of truth in it and we who are suffering have really never examined, questioned, or inventoried the validity of these erroneous assumptions, misbeliefs. In this series of lessons on wilt thou be made whole, do you really want a better life, we have been learning that the word of God has the power to heal your broken spirit, to make you whole, and to guard you or guard against emotional and spiritual discontentedness. We've been learning that. So in our text, the Bible says that Jesus asked the man laying by the pool of Bethesda for 38 long years. The Bible teaches, in a sense, from a physical aspect. The Bible says that there were many who were laying by the pool of Bethesda, physically halt and withered and lame. But what the Bible really doesn't say, that if you have been dealing with a problem or problem or situation or condition, that there's some psychological and emotional effects that go along with your physical hindrances. Are y'all with me this morning? Although the Bible talks about Jesus healed a man from his physical ailment, that he was lame, but I want you to understand, for 38 years this man watched many people get into the pool and get what they needed. Are y'all with me this morning? And if we're not careful, we will allow some of those things to set up in our minds. Am I, are y'all with me this morning? And so I thought that what we would do is we would talk just a little bit about and, and, and finalize what we have been talking about so we can really live the life that God has ordained us to live being made free and whole from a hopeless state of mind and body. Are y'all with me this morning? And, 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 so, and so 
this man that Jesus was talking to, he answered Jesus when Jesus asked him, Wilt thou be made whole? The man answered and said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. In our first lesson, when we started, we discussed that we must stop justifying and rationalizing how we see things and come to the reality that because of life's experiences, because of our ch early childhood belief system, coupled with the influences of societal and worldly concepts, pain resulting from unhealthy or broken relationships, even what has happened due to COVID has caused the many of us to become spiritually discontented. When we really sit down and look at it. The world was thrust into social distancing, or if you will, we had to quarantine ourselves away from one another. And for some, it was good, but for some, it was bad. Are y'all with me this morning? Even told us that we could meet as a church. <clears throat> Excuse me. That we had to go online. We had to figure this thing out how we could still meet on the Lord's day. Are, are y'all with me this morning? Some people buried stuff. Some people just went on and didn't deal with it. But there's other people that are dealing with the effects of trauma and really don't know how to deal with it. Watch this now. I'm, I'm going to give you this. Watch this now. I, you know, when I read this and you, we read and I study, and I'm going I'm to move forward, how, how far was this lame man away from the pool? What was it that hindered him from really getting it? Because he was not totally incapacitated. The Bible says, while I'm coming, others got in there before me. Watch this. The Bible says, at a certain time, season, the angel came and troubled the water. I guess by the time the season was over, the water was not troubled anymore. Are y'all with y'all with me this morning? For 38 years, he had been trying to get what he needed. And it took Jesus to ask him a question. Do you want to be made whole? In other words, in other words, in other words, people need the church. But those who need the church may not be the ones who are saved. It's only those who want the church. Y'all might well say amen. There are some people who need some stuff that may not get it, but the people who get it are the people who want some stuff. Are y'all with me this morning? And so, and so until there's something within inside of us that calls us to want something bad enough, we'll get it. Is, is that okay? Is that okay? All right, all right. Okay, let's go on. The more we justified and the more we rationalize our condition, the more we develop an adaptation to our affliction, which in turn became strongholds in our lives. That's just a process. Therefore, in order for, for us to heal our broken spirit, to pull down the strongholds in our lives, to overcome the grip of psychological and pathological barriers caused by the traumatic experiences, we must recognize that we cannot overcome these barriers alone and that we must get the proper help that we need and then to look unto Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Week two, or week before last, before we had last week, we, we, we talked about a systemic process of healing our broken spirit. What we did was we began to dismantle our current belief system by taking a deep, personal, and fearless moral inventory of ourselves in order that we might live the life that God has ordained us to live. 
In other words, in this inventory, we recognize and confronted issues that caused us discomfort, low self-esteem, and low self-worth, and that which caused us anger and resentment. We recognize and confronted those issues. Then what we did in that lesson is we made a list of those things. We analyzed in our thoughts and our perspectives on how we felt about ourselves and how we felt about our interpersonal relationship with other people. And then what we did is we compared the possible untruth or lies that we told ourselves versus the truth of God's word so that we can ascertain patterns of unhealthy habitual feelings uh -huh, that influence our character and our behavior. In other words, if we don't take the time to sit down sometimes and think some things through, watch this now, and compare our thoughts to the word of God, we might be still operating on the carnal man. Are y'all with me this morning? I just, I just want to finish this series of lessons because we, as a people, have been dealing with some issues, whether family or personal, work or church, for quite some time, and we need to let Jesus and the Word of God show us some truth. It's just, it is what it is. Somebody, some people said the Bible is a mirror. So you can what? You can take your thoughts and, and just wash them. David said, wash me thoroughly. Clean me up. He was talking about let your word do it for me because I can't do it. I have tried and I have tried. I have attempted. I have attempted. That's what, that, that, that is the perfect word for powerlessness. Now, 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 let me, let me clarify something. Let me clarify something. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So, 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 I want, I want to clarify something. Whatever self-help group that we need, whatever psychiatrist, whatever therapist, whatever licensed person in our society, they had to start from the Word of God. There's nothing wrong with getting a license. There's nothing wrong with going to your profession, but you better start from the Word of God. Because the Word of God is the moral code which all human beings ought to be living by. That's why the Bible says we are in the world, but what? Not of the world. So that's why I wanted us to understand that if we fail to recognize some things, we keep justifying and rationalizing and saying, oh, I don't worry about that stuff. I just move on. Or we say, that's how I was raised. You remember we talked about absolute statements? Be careful when you do that, because when you make an absolute statement that is based on your own thing, that's why the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Brother Booker's not saying that we're not intelligent people. I know we're intelligent people and we're thoughtful people because the Bible says way back that the people uh, in that day thought that they would build a tower on their own thinking that would reach up to heaven. Y'all know what I'm talking about. How many times we've come up with some type of scheme, some kind of whatever, and, and, and find out that God just in the back just laughing. Does that make sense to us? So I wanted to end up on this particular day to finish out this lesson because we've done some work. When we recognized and confronted some things, when we made a list of some things, when we compared some things, by doing this, we were are now then able, watch this now, to differentiate the lie from the truth and begin to remove the lies from the belief system or our belief system and replace them with truth statements centered in the spiritual wellness of God's holy and divine word. And so in this final lesson of this series of will thou be made whole, do, do, do you want a better life? I want to talk this morning just for a moment about facing your giant. Facing your giant so that you may build a faith that saves, supplies, sustains, and satisfies the soul. Facing your giant. See, 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 see this lesson. This is where you tell yourself, if nothing changes, nothing changes. 
This is, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is the process. We know that it, it happens in other programs, but in the, this is our guide, the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A word that needs not to be what? A, a, a word that not, not to be approved, but rightly divide the word of God. You're not doing it. You're not ashamed. You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for God. So we, so we begin this process just, just allowing Brother Booker and those around you just to help us along the way, just to say to ourselves, you know what? There is some things I really need to take a look at. There is some things I really need to sit down and meditate on. There is some things that I need to get right with myself and with God. So I can move forward. You know, if you go to any hospital, if you go to any, any nursing facility, if you go to any facility, I guarantee you those who are in there are tell, will tell you, I want to go home. They want to be better. They want to be well. And that's what Jesus asked this man. He had known he had been there. For 38 years, not only from his physical condition, but from his mental, his emotional, his psychological state, and asked him, do you want to be made whole? He gave an answer. He, he responded and said, while I'm coming, I have no man to put me in. And, and, and I'm coming, they keep stepping over me. So Jesus really asked him, do you want to be made whole? Did he ever say yes? He never said yes. He gave an excuse. He gave a reason why. As I said in the first lesson, he was at the right place, talking to the right man at the right season. And didn't answer Jesus the question. You see how good God, good God is? Jesus says, rise. Stand up and what? Walk. I'm sure, I'm sure during that 38 years, Brother Riddick, really, somebody else told that man to get up. Oh, y'all ain't getting, look here, did y'all get that? I'm sure along the way somebody then told you, you ought to leave that stuff alone. You ought to give it to God. You ought to pray. Somebody has told you some important, positive information, but the, the, this is how we are. We want to hold on to stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Since you hurt me, I'm going to make you hurt just as much as, okay, I'm going to go on. I want you to feel the same thing that I felt. As I said in the first lesson, how dare you treat me that way? Is, is that okay? It's in there. You just have to look inside the scriptures and look beyond the physicality of what the Bible is teaching and understand that this man is a human being. He feels, he thinks, he sees, he get hungry, he get tired. He's a human being. And in life, we're going to have to face those things. The question is, are we taking the time to get the help that we need? So this is where you tell yourself, if nothing changes, nothing changes. This is where you take a stand and swallow your pride and accept some big chunks of truth about yourselves and face your giant, and that giant is you. That giant is you. It's time for you to say to yourself, the world owes me nothing, and I'm going to stop blaming everybody else for not getting what I need and for the condition I am in. It's time to build a faith that saves, supplies, sustains, and satisfies a soul so that when the devil tries to sift you like wheat, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. For here it is you'll say to yourself, that will be your buckler and shield in a time of trouble. For he it is that you will that will uphold you, strengthen you, and guide you. For he it is that will order your steps, and it is in him that you will be able to live and to move and have your very being when you face yourself. Therefore. We must continue to face ourselves, your giant, and tell yourself the truth 
so that you may be an influencer to them who you come in contact with. You know, sometimes, it's just Brother Booker, when you, I, 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 I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging to invite somebody, but have you ever thought about why somebody don't want to come with you? Have you ever thought about why your family members don't want to? I mean, I'm just, I just want to give some practical application. I'm not saying that they have their own reasons, but am I still the salt that God said I am? Am I still the light that Jesus said I am? Am I flip-flopping? Am I, today, I'm Dion, but tomorrow, I'm Brother Booker. Today, are y'all ain't with me this morning? It's, it's sort of like that. Today we do windows. Tomorrow we. <laughs> Consistency is key. I, I'm, is that okay? I just want to help us as we finish out this series of lessons that before I can move on, there's some things that are probably hindering me from moving forward. Go over there and get Aiken. Y'all know what happened with Aiken. That was sin found in the camp. You are always walking before an all-seeing God. So rather Brother Booker or your brother or sister see you, God sees you. You answer to him and him alone. That's why David said, I have sinned against thee and thee only. Is that okay? Okay, okay, okay. As I hasten along, continue to remain vigilant. Steadfast and unmovable, standing on the promises of God. We must, you must continue to incorporate or reincorporate the word of God in your life if you are truly going to live a happy and productive life. Don't simply just seek relief, but seek freedom. Freedom from the bondage of self. If you look further down into the text, come on with me, come on with me. Further down into the text in verse 9, when we look at verse 9, watch this now. The Bible says the man just didn't, that didn't get up when Jesus spoke to him. He got up, but he also did some, Brother Davies. He took his bed with him. Sometimes we leave the door cracked. Sometimes as we study on Wednesday nights, we don't say emphatically no. And mean it. Sometimes we address things in a manner so we can kind of come back around and deal with that thing again in our way. No, if you leave your bed there, you got a possibility of going back and getting in it. In other words, in other words, I'm moving on. In other words, when you go, if you will, to the pool of Bethesda and get what you need, you ought not be returning back to the pool of Bethesda. Because the Bible says when God frees you, he frees you indeed. In other words, watch this now. Watch it. Let, let, let's, let's go to the text. I, I, I mean, I got happy when I saw it. Drop down. Drop down to verse 14. I, I, watch this right here now. Watch, watch, watch it now. When this man, uh, and I'll meet you at verse 14, but, 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 but when this man got up, he took up his bed and walked. In other words, the man began to walk in the newness of life, and Jesus, watch this, found him in the what? temple and what he was doing was giving honor and praise for what had been done in his life. And that what your Bible says? And afterward Jesus found him in the temple. Well if you go back in, in, in Bible times in the first century the temple is where you went to praise and give alms. That's what temple means. It was a place of worship and so what happened is this man was lying there for 38 years was healed of his, his, his physical uh, 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 physicality. And the Bible says, watch this, he went to church. Some of us, God will bless, and we don't come to church. We go everywhere else, telling everybody else, but coming to church and using your blessing to bless somebody else. That's why we get blessed, so we can bless somebody else. If God has blessed you to overcome whatever vice, whatever stronghold, whatever situation that you've been in, I guarantee you somebody in the church is going through the same thing. 
The difference is, is you can assist and help them with the word of God. That's how we strengthen and edify the body. That's how we as members, along with the eldership, because we know that a preacher came in and told the elders, watch the flock. Some things they're not going to see, but you can. Don't get upset. Now, y'all know I'm going to get in good trouble. Don't get upset because somebody shared with the elders what you're doing. Shacking up. Going to the club. Dancing and gyrating all over the place. Wearing stuff that you all just not even put it on anyway. Y'all know it. Yeah, Brother Booker going there. Because we are, when we're going to be starting learning, when you transform, when God blesses you and changes you, you ought not to be the same person anyway. So you don't need to go back to the pool of Bethesda. What it says is, that says, go to church. But I don't go to church because they judge me. And? You mean to tell me you just going to stop getting your, come and get your blessing because somebody don't like you? Somebody going to talk about you? They talked about Jesus Christ. They hung him on a cross. He still did his father. When are we going to get strong enough, have the courage to stand bold and stand up and say, I don't care what you say about me because God has forgiven me. Watch this right here. And you are in sin for talking about me. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. I just want us to be real Christians. It's okay. Look here. There ain't nothing I, and I, there ain't, nothing I ain't told my wife. Well, Brother Book, you know some things are private. Everybody ain't got your best interest at hand. Well, the Bible that I read tells me I'm going to stand before just God. You can talk about me all you want to. Because last I read, liars won't make it into heaven. Thieves won't make it into heaven. Gossipers won't. So you keep on gossiping. You keep on lying. You keep on talking about me. And I'm going to keep on walking straight, turning right. Is that all right? Why? Because I was that person at the pool of Bethesda. And I'm not just talking about what I've been through. I'm just talking about, okay, okay, you say, what are you saying, Brother Booker? Well, let me get ahead of myself. Well, 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 the Bible says, the Bible says, if, if I can, I, I, look here, mm, I, I tell you, I, 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 I got to give it all to you. I got a little time. I got to give it all to you. Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that okay? Uh, okay, okay, okay. When we speak in terms, I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting excited now, Brother Davis, and, and it's almost just coming out of me. When we speak in terms of a faith that saves and a faith that supplies, a faith that sustains and a faith that satisfies a soul, what we are saying is that through it all, by God's amazing grace, we have been redeemed. We have been bought by the precious blood of Christ. We have been delivered from a hopeless state of brokenness and have been made whole to serve God with a pure and sincere heart, with a sound mind and a clear conscience. When I come to church, y'all know I preach that sermon, I'm not coming for you. I'm coming because I'm a saved sinner and I need help. I need help because I know on Monday morning when I go to work, them other folk go say something to me. And I don't want to flip. Matter of fact, I may be riding home from church. Something I said may have. I have to reach over and it's okay, baby. The devil can jump in me like it can jump in you. Haven't you been in the house and your wife said something that you thought was a little too tart? Y'all might want to say amen. Haven't you been with your child and said something to you too, a little too tart? You got to bring that tone down. I'm just, y'all know, I'm, y'all know what I'm saying. I'm just telling the truth. I'm, I'm just saying I need Jesus. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday, I need him because I got a mouth. 
that the Bible says, James says, no man can tame the tongue. Man, I can say some things and, and just upset the whole apple cart. I can throw the rock and hide my hand. Are y'all with me this morning? So, 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 so when, when, this, when this happens, we're talking about building a faith. That saves, a faith that saves is one that responds to the master's call. A faith that saves is one that renounces the hidden things of dishonesty, shakes off the things that so easily beset us so we can run with patience the race that is set before us. A faith that saves ultimately is a faith that believes that there is only one Lord, and one faith, and one baptism that there is one God and one Father of all who is above all, through all, and in us all. When we look at a faith that supplies, the Apostle Paul said it best in Philippians 4.19, but God shall what? Supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. My dealer is not the one standing on the corner anymore. Mm-hmm. My dealer is not the local alcohol uh, uh, liquor store anymore. Mm-hmm. My de- y'all know what I'm talking about. My dealer is not over-the-counter prescriptions mm, no more. I'm talking about I have been redeemed. What Brother Booker said, what, what I'm saying is, is that when God delivers you from that mindset, you know how to rightly divide and discern some things to live a better life. When Paul said that, what he was really saying is, watch this now, if we take care of the main thing, the main thing will take care of you. What are you saying, Brother Booker? Look at your neighbor say, neighbor? Oh, no. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven in his righteousness. When you take care of the main thing, the main thing will take care of you. When you take care of God's people, God's people will take care of you. Press down. Shaking together, running over. If I can for a moment, nurses, if you're in the house, stand up. If you're in the health field, stand up. If you're in the financial field, stand up. If you're in social services, stand up. If you're in law, stand up. If you're in anything that's going to help somebody to live a better life, everybody in here ought to be standing up because you have a talent and a gift that God has given you and he has created and he has made a church that everything you need is in the church. It is. Brother Book is not teaching or preaching against the therapist out there because at some congregation we have a therapist. You know what? I have called Dr. McClure on many occasions. He is kind of like our resident therapist. He's licensed. He is. I've called him on many occasions. I need some help with this. Spiritually. I've called him many of ministers. I need some help with this. Spiritually. I've called him a, a, a many of, 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 of older senior couples, married couples. I need help with this. I've, I've leaned on, I'm, I'm talking about as a preacher. I was in a dark place. I faced some traumatic experiences in my life, even in the church. And I need some help. I need you to guide me through this. Because I don't want to come back. You know they say there's no hurt like church hurt. If I can speak to you online that you're members of Suitland, come on back. We love you. We are, we were wrong for doing what we did. Please forgive us. Give us an opportunity to make it right. Come on back. Is that, is that okay? Is that, we, we, really, come on back. 
if you're here in the audience, I was here one Sunday. That's why we're moving on. And I, I was not here on that Sunday, but I was told that your leader stood before you and said there were some things that we just didn't do right. Now, y'all are looking at me mighty funny. That's what true forgiveness is. When you can stand up and face yourself and say, I just didn't quite do it right. I made a list of some things. I've already talked to God about this. But just because you didn't see me repent doesn't mean that I didn't repent. I was at the pool of Bethesda. Just because the Bible says he didn't repent doesn't mean he repent. What the Bible says is God told him to rise. He got up and walked and took his bed and went to church. And I don't ever read where he went back to the pool of Bethesda. Well, as I, as I hasten and come to a close, mm, boy, it gets so good. It just, brother, good, it gets so good. It's like dynamite. I can't say good no more, so I got to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that what JJ said? <laughs> it's dino. I'm just saying, I can't say good no more. So I, I thought about that thing, and he's right, because I didn't want to pay him every time I said it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, and they charge his interest. <laughs> She's died on mine. <laughs> okay. If I can share as I come to a close a familiar testimony, that's, that's what it is a testimony. And y'all know the familiar testimony because you all think. And I don't know, maybe you do, and I'm just saying this because I'm preaching and saying it, that, that the, the process that we just preached over these sermons, it happened. It did happen. Watch this right here. With regards to a broken spirit, him needing to be healed, rekindled, and given hope again, right? Because no matter how far down the scale you go in life, God's amazing grace can reach you. Hmm. Y'all know where I'm going. The prodigal son took matters into his own hands. If you look at Luke 15, verses 12. He left his father's house. Now, symbolically, that was his father's house on a farm, if you will. He was working. But he was an age where he said, Give me everything that belonged to me, not knowing that nothing belonged to him. But give me everything. He left his father's house. The church is the father's house. Many of us get upset, get angry, and leave the father's house and go to a far country. That far country is right across the street. Y'all might well say amen. We get upset and mad and angry. We take our marbles and we leave the Father's house. Our mind told us. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Psychological things and, and pathological things and the lies that I tell myself. I want to fix, manage, throw. I'm leaving. I'm going. Watch this right now. Watch this right now. He, he went to a far country. Why? And he allowed his fleshly desires to be the compass of his life and became a victim of his own decision making. Now you want to blame them, those, and they. You want to talk about others rather than facing your giant. Looking at yourself. Are, are y'all with me? He left, he left his father's house, right? right? He, he got out there, but watch this right here. In, in verse 14 to 17, God allowed him to see himself in his condition. He needed a divine intervention. See, there are some things that you just need in an intervention from God. Is, is, is that okay? He, 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 he took inventory of his condition. That's in your Bible, right? The Bible says he came to himself. In other words, he evaluated his condition, he began to think about what it was like back at his father's house and what it's like in the condition that he was in. He, he, he evaluated himself. He, 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 he took inventory of his situation. He, he, he got up. He, 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 he got focused. He, he told himself the truth. 
He, he faced his giants and he went back to his father's house. He went back to an all-supplying father who supplies true love and true compassion. How do we know? Because the Bible says when the father saw him afar off, he didn't wait till he came. He ran to him, kissed him on the neck. But there are some of us who are sitting right here. Y'all ain't throw no party for me. I ain't gone nowhere. I didn't leave. Psychological and pathological barriers telling yourself certain things will set up in you. You'll get angry at people because of their decision making. It's time for us to face the fact that I can't fix, manage, and control anybody. I can only fix, manage, and control me. I want to get my mind right. I want to get my heart right. I want to get my spirit right. So when I come to worship, I ain't thinking about nothing else but worshiping God. Is, is, is that okay? Watch it, watch it, watch it right now. Watch it right now. When, when, he, he, he went back to a father that had true compassion, who supplies true forgiveness and true care. What, if, if, if you take care of God's house, God's house will take care of you. As I, as I move along and come to a close, we not only talked about a faith that, that saves in a, in a faith that, that supplies, uh, in, in a faith that, 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 that sustains you, except, except, except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain that build it, and except the Lord keep the city, the watchman worketh, watches him, walketh in vain. For the Lord's church is where you can regain your courage and renew your strength to stand on your own two feet and walk in confidence. The Lord's church is where you can be restored to, to your right frame of mind and receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to save your soul. The church that Jesus built has a foundation laid that no other man can lay. And as landlord, he will give you grace and mercy in the time of need for his church is the pillar and ground of truth. Is that, is that okay? As I, as I close, I want to talk about a faith that satisfies the soul. A faith that satisfies the soul. The psalmist said in Psalms 133, mm -hmm, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. Is, is that in your Bible? It says, it's, it says, it's like precious ointment that, 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 that is upon the head that run down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. That went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life evermore. Get, get for me Psalms 23. Hmm. I think I'll close with Psalms 23. Who, who, somebody help me read this morning. It, it, it doesn't, who, who's got a, who's got a, a br brother good, you, you got a mic back there? Uh, 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 brother, brother Joel, you got your mic over there? Get for me. I'm talking about a, a, a faith that, that, that satisfies the soul. For David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want. Read. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You're talking about a shepherd. You're talking about a word. You're talking about a house, a church. You're talking about a faith that, that, that I have built on the foundation of the word of God. David said, your word leadeth me and guideth me. You're my shepherd. 
You make me lie down, read, beside still water. He, he restoreth my soul. He, he, he leadeth me where I need to go, not where I want to go. I, ho, 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 I, I want to go over here because that's where my friend's at. I want to go over there because it seemed like they're having a whole lot of fun. I want to go over there because that's what's familiar to me. But he says, I have a faith that although I can use my peripheral vision, I'm still looking forward. Read, read. Why? Why? He leads me down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yo, read. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Why I want to fear the people? Why I won't fear society? Why I won't fear the drink? Why I won't fear the drug? Why I won't fear the walker? Why I won't fear the evil? Why I won't I fear it, Brother Davis? For thou art what? With me. Hold it. When you're not with me, God is. When you're not with me, you can't be with me. God is. If I can, if I can break frustration identification, you know, a part of me want to believe that's why the Bible says that when, when, when Adam was naming all of the animals, mm -hmm, there was none found suitable for him. Mm -hmm. And so he put him to sleep. Are y'all with me this morning? I just want to use my spiritual. Can I use my own spiritual imagination this morning? that's going to line up with the word of God because I'm going to bring it home. And when he woke up, he found somebody that was for him. And he said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And God says, I'm going to give you a help me. So wherever you go, you got somebody with you. Oh, y'all ain't get that this morning. You ever heard somebody say marriage ain't for everybody? Y'all better read that again. Marriage is honorable in the sight of God. Oh, y'all, y'all say, well, book, you step it in. I almost step in it. Because the Bible that I read is God wanted a family. He put two people together. And if I'm right, he says, now go in what? Be fruitful and multiply. That's why we're called the family of God. But David said, I have a faith that, 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 that satisfies my soul because wherever I go, thou art with me. Read. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Read. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my what? Leave your enemies alone. Leave your enemies alone. Don't deal with them. Why? Because you got a God that's going to deal with them. And the Bible says, be careful if I say it, do not fall in the hands of an angry God. No, I'm going to leave you up to my God. My God will do it better than I can. See, if I handle it, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going straight to jail. I'm going to pass go. I ain't going to collect nothing. I'm going straight because I'm a, that's just that's where my mind works. If somebody came into my house to mess with this one, ain't but two of us. So if something moved, either she moved or I moved. If something moved, something wrong somewhere. Now I'm, we, 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 we dog sitting, he may be in the house, but the point being is I'm going to jail because I'm probably going to black out. Y'all got children? Yeah, you know, I deal with parent mothers every day. Ain't nothing like a mother's love with her children. The story is told that Johnny was a part of the band. Mother was sitting in the stand, and everybody was marching. And Johnny was off count, and she said, look at it, everybody else off beat. <laughs> no, Johnny's off beat. Johnny need to get on beat. Your child, you know, are y'all following me? But, but, 
But David, David is saying, what, 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 what? I don't fear that thou art with me. Thou prepares the table and the presence of my enemies. Read. Thou anointest my head with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So as I've grown spiritually in the word of God, I know what I deal with you now. I can love you from a distance. I can pray for you. I don't have to get involved in that conversation because I choose not to because I know where it's going to go. Is, is that okay? Read. And my cup runs over. Cup over. Goodness, Surely, goodness and mercy, and mercy shall follow me, follow me all, all the days of my life. And I will what? Man, you're talking about a, a faith that just satisfies the soul. You don't need anything else when you get Jesus. You don't need anything else when you obey the gospel. See, see, that's what the world don't understand. That's what denominations don't understand. That's what other churches don't understand. That's what pastors don't understand. That's what reverend doctors don't understand. That's what priests don't understand. That's what all of those don't understand, that there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Christ only, he only designed, he only built, he only died for one church. That's in the Bible. How can you skip over that? There's only one. And when your mind begins to, to, to water that down and make it more than that, you're adding to the scriptures, and the Bible says, do not add nor take away. You know how I know God meant one? Because we bear his name, which is Christian. It ain't Baptist Christian, Methodist Christian, Catholic Christian, Protestant Christian, Islamic Christian, Seventh Day Adventist Christian, across the way, the hill, the church, learning star, bright star Christian. It's just simply Christian. We wear his name. Ain't but one. Sister Booker, stand up, please. She wears my name. How many Sister Bookers standing up? One. You can't get but one out of one. How do I become a member of that one church? How do I, how do I become a member of that church that Christ purchased with his own blood. The Bible says, watch this now, so then faith, we just talked about four different things. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must repent of your sins. What that means is you must do an inventory. You must ask yourself, am I in the right church? Do I have the right relationship? Am I living right? Well, if I'm living right from a moral sense, but I'm not living right as a Christian, I got to bring that together. Because you could be morally right and still spiritually wrong. That's what the Bible teaches. So you must repent of your sins. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. And then the Bible says, as they asked Peter, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and what? Be baptized. So what are you saying, Brother Booker? In order to be a member of the body of Christ, of the church of Christ, you must obey God's plan of salvation, which is hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. The water is ready, men ready, heaven is ready. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. You will begin to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And the church here, Suitman Road, would help you to grow you and nurture you and develop you into the Christian that God is pleased with. And then we will help you to go out and bring somebody else to Christ. If you're here and you are a member of the body of Christ, as we've taught these lessons of do you want to be made whole? Do you really want to be uh, have a better life? Brother Booker did not teach personally that something is wrong with you. Brother Booker simply wanted to go through some lessons to say to ourselves, it's been a long four years, and we've made it. I just want to make sure that as we move forward, as we move forward as a congregation, as a church, and we build relationships with, with each other, that they are transparent, authentic, and real. And we're doing so with purpose. We're doing so with purpose. Getting out of our own way. Making sure that we go out into the highways and byways that God's house can be healed. And that's why we come to church, to worship God in spirit and in truth. 
And if you're here this morning, you say it's subject to God's invitation. Why don't you come as we stand and as we sing? Lord, show me the way. Oh, Lord, show me the way. Well, it's down here, Lord. Will there be one that will come? And I need we dedicate their lives. Whenever we come that needs prayer, that needs support, will there be one that will come and put Christ on in baptism? Why don't you come and give your life to Christ? There'll be one. If you're online and, you, and you're hearing my voice, why don't you I call the church? Why don't you put in the chat that you have a desire to learn more about the Bible, learn more about Jesus, learn more about the church here at Suitland. We will make sure that we reach out to you and establish and, and set up a Bible study with you. If you'll learn more about the Lord's church, why don't you come? I'm your child. Well, I'm not you may be seated. Show me the way, oh Lord, show me the way, cause I am down here, Lord, and I need your Show, show me, show me the way. Thank you, Lord, oh, and I say thank you. I say thank you, Lord, and I just want to thank you, Lord, because you've been so good, bless Lord, you've been so good yes you've been so good and i just want to thank you I want to thank Brother Booker for the message. If only we could learn to control self. And stop trying to control other people that we can't control. Sister Only Harris, please keep Michael in your prayers. He hurt his knee and is trying to work through the issue and uh, a prayer of thanksgiving that he is steadfast in the Bible. That's great. Sister Sarah Davis, pray for Donna Chester, whose nephew was found in the backyard 
yesterday, found dead in the backyard yesterday. Donna and uh, Clinton are traveling to Cambridge, Maryland, to support the family. Keep them in your prayers, the entire family. Brother Travis Swift, pray for my sister as I continue to stand by the book of John with her. I pray that she will accept the gospel. Mr. George Powell, Brother Booker, thank you for the message today. I pray of thanksgiving for improved health and answers to prayer. Rashid Davis, I'm asking for personal prayers that I can be made whole. Also, I, I have been experiencing some difficulty with pregnancy. Pray that I can get relief. And thank you, Brother Booker, for the message. Let us pray. Almighty God, we humbly bow before you, knowing that you have the answer to every problem that we have. Father, we come because we realize that we really have nowhere else to go. If we don't bring our problems to you, they will never be solved. So, Father, we ask that you just continue to be with us. Help us to realize from where our blessings come. And, Father, help us to understand the obligation that we have, not only to ourselves, but to our brothers and sisters in Christ and to those people that we meet in the world. We know the truth, Father, and we are obligated to let other people know the truth. We pray that you would just give us the courage to speak at every opportunity that we have. Pray that you would continue to be with Sister Davis, be with her in her pregnancy and the health issues that she has. And Father, whatever she's working with, we know that you have the power to make sure that it comes out the way that you want it to come out. We pray that you would grant her the peace and let her realize that you are in the healing buildings and you can heal her. If it be thy will, we pray that she will receive what she needs. And we know that you have the power to do it. Sister Powell, just so thankful for the message this morning. She thankful for the answered prayers and the improved health. And she knows that all that she gets, she it comes from you because in you we move, have our being. And it's because of you that we're able to do the things that we do. And for that, we give thanks. Pray that you would just continue to be with her and help her health to continue to improve. Brother Travis, I ask that you be with him as he touched, as he studied with a sister. And Father, we pray that she would be receptive and accept the gospel as it is taught and realize that all of us must make that decision to do what you tell us to do if we want to have eternal life. We pray that you would just continue to be with all of us as we continue to do your will. Father, help us to remain focused. Most of all, Father, we pray that we never grow weary in doing good. Continue to be with us, lead, guide, and direct us. In Christ's name do we pray. Amen. As the men get as the men prepare for offering and communion, we will sing from him one eighteen. One eighteen. Count your blessings. One eighteen. Again, that is one eighteen. If you have it, say amen. Let us sing. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done.
now we begin our offering service. This is where we get the opportunity to show God how much we appreciate him by giving of our material possessions back to him who gave them to us. It all belongs to him anyway. Uh, we're going to be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. And it reads, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he pur purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly and righteous Father God, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us, O oh Lord. Our employment, our businesses, our homes, our vehicles, all the many material possessions that you abundantly bless us with, O oh Lord. We thank you for these things, O oh Lord. And we just thank you for giving us an opportunity to show you how much we appreciate you, O oh Lord. And we just pray that we give these things not grudgingly or out of necessity, as your word says, but that we do it out of a cheerful heart that we desire to give to you as you freely give us all things to enjoy. Be with us, strengthen us, God, our footsteps, direct our path through your son, Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy when you're called to bear? Count your many blessings, every one will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings and he cannot buy your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, at least in ten. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. As we prepare our hearts for communion, we will sing from hymn 784, 784. If you have it, let us sing. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose the lowly birth? Because he loved me so, me so. He loved me so, me so. He Right. 
precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts to begin our communion service, which is one of the primary reasons that we come to meet on the first day of the week. Uh, if there is anyone in the assembly who has not received a communion uh, packet, please raise your hand and the ushers will bring you one as you receive it. Amen. If there is no one else that needs it, we will begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. Again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 23. For I received of the Lord, the which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night on which he was portrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the body. Heavenly, our righteous Father God, we thank you for laying down your flesh, laying down your body, O oh Lord. Not because you needed to, but because we needed you to. Thank you, Lord. And as we eat of this bread, let us understand what it represents, O oh Lord, that we do it in remembrance of you, O oh God. That we may live lives worthy of the call that you have called us. These things we pray through your son, in Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen. Beginning at verse 25. After the same manner, also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Let's pray for the cup. Heavenly, our righteous Father God, we thank you for spilling your blood, O oh Lord, purchasing, purchasing us with your blood, O oh Lord. It was the only means of payment that would be acceptable for our sins, O oh God. We thank you. For giving your blood, O oh Lord, that cleanses us, that washes us, that forgives us and makes us whole. And as we drink of this cup, O oh Lord, let us not do it as a mere formality, but let us understand what it is for, O oh God. Thank you. And we just pray that we do it in remembrance of you until we can eat of this bread and drink of this cup with you, O oh Lord, in your kingdom. These things we pray through your son, in Jesus Christ, son we pray. Amen. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why? cross he lifted up because he loved me so he loved me so me so he loved me so 
so he gave his precious life for me for me because he loved me so till jesus comes i'll sing his praise and then to glory go and reign with him through endless days because he loved me so he loved me so me so he precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so, me so, he loved me so, me so, he precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Let us all say amen. Let's say so amen again. I guess y'all say finally we're through with that. Huh? Now I'm down to move on. Now to move on. Just want to I thank all of the brothers again for uh, participating and carrying out our worship. Just want to say that in the next couple of weeks or months or so, we'll be meeting. Uh, I like to meet with the chair uh, persons of each ministry just so I can get to know the ministry a little bit better, a little bit more for those who are working in different ministries. We know that uh, there are some ministries that are uh, chairpersons that are vacant. We're going to look for individuals who have the desire uh, and, of course, skill set and talents to work in those ministries. We have quite a few ministries here at the church, and I know that because of COVID and just some various things that uh, I'm thankful for those who have stepped up uh, to carry that on, but I wanted you to know that we'll be meeting uh, with this ministry. Whatever I can do to support and help the ministries out, I was able to log in with the youth, uh, young people on Thursday, and Brother Travis is doing an outstanding job uh, and had a full class. Um, and I just kind of wanted to sit back and just listen. Um, uh, and, and I promise you I won't log on to the ladies' uh, thing. I'm going to try not to. If y'all preach, I'll preach. But I uh, but, uh, just wanted to share with you what we did. We'd had our, our first, if you will, our second our meeting with the elders. I had a great meeting, got some things that we're talking about, some areas of the church that we're just looking at having just a great time and moving forward. And so uh, we have the rest of the year. We're getting into what's called the third quarter. Um, and, and so we're just going to just encourage and encourage and preach. Uh, but we do uh, want to start thinking ahead. Uh, in 2023, uh, we're going to be talking about some things. Uh, we're going to be addressing the congregation on some things moving forward. We're not taking going fast. This is not a sprint. Uh, this is not a marathon. This is cross country. Uh, and, and we're here, and we just want to work. Uh, I will be, I let the elders know that I will be having a suggestion box. I want to hear from you, uh, some things that you may have, some thoughts and ideas and things. We're a we're family. Uh, we're family. We do have a purpose. We do have a mission. Uh, although we are going to heaven, that is our ultimate goal. But there are some things, and there's some things that we want to do. There's some shaking off of uh, some things that we haven't <coughs> been able to do because of COVID, and so we just want to look, we're looking forward to everybody uh, uh, putting our hands to the plow and working and doing all that we can do 
uh, even uh, when it comes to our evangelism ministry. Uh, we want to really wake that up and look at it um, as, as uh, you know, it is true. And we were at a meeting, if you will. We're sharing the parking lot across the street. I want to thank Brother, um, uh, 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 Brother Davis and Brother uh, Riddick and, and Brother, um, shoot, Boykin, Brother Boykin. Yeah, for we had a meeting with those, the individuals across the street, had a, a pretty good meeting. It's a business uh, understanding that we have. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but one of them did say there is growth in Suitland, whether we know it or not. It is growing. Uh, when we drive down, we see things happening all around us. Uh, the world, in a sense, has um, uh, woken back up, if you will. And it's, 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 it's out there. And, and we need to really... Um, work on getting ourselves ready for what God has for Um and, and we're we're ready. We're excited. We're excited to bind and come together. And so we're going to be building relationships. As I said this morning, I love you. Um, and, and I love you just because of who you are. Um, and we want to grow and move. And so just wanted to share that with you as well. We're going to be just doing some things and growing. And I just wanted to stand before you and let you know that we are meeting. We're talking about some things. Um, and when we meet with each particular ministry, um, everybody has their talent. We know our role. We know our ministry. We're going to do all we can for the love of God. You know, uh, we were going to do that. And so thank you so much. And I know we're going to recognize our visitors that time. But if you are here with us, I do know we have two that I've, I've known. Thank you for uh, being uh, here with us. We're so thankful that you decided uh, to be with us. And even those who are aligned, uh, we appreciate so much um, that we, that you are are with us. And so we just ask that come again uh, and, and, and just experience the love that we have here at Suitland um, uh, Church of Christ. Because it's like uh, J.J. said, it's what? Dynamite! It's okay. All right. <laughs> well, we want to thank Brother Booker for that message, definitely. Uh, we want to, as he said, we want to take uh, this time to acknowledge our visitors. And so if you are visiting with us for the first time, we ask that you just stand and give us your name. And I do have a card of Miss Judy Uber. 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 All right. How you doing? Okay. So tell us where you're from. Are you in this area? Amen. Amen. Well, she's a guest of Elder Bill Davis. Um, so just want to go over a few announcements. Um, ladies, there's a retreat meeting uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, if you have any questions, please contact Sister Booker or Sister Good. Uh, also, ladies, there's a save the date for the retreat, which is October 7th and October 8th. Um, so us uh, see uh, again sister booker or sister good if you have any questions um if we don't have any other announcements let us please stand for our closing song and prayer jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on calvary on mount calvary cruel calvary Pave the way thy blood that we might win a bright shining crown. I tell you to praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, glory, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down from heaven. Go and shout and tell it to the world around. Tell it today. Tell it today and preach the word of God that we might win a crown in heaven. Tell the Lord salvation is full and free. 
spread the news all over the land and sea. Tell it afar, tell it afar. Praise the Lord, the vision has been brought down. Our Father, which is in heaven, we come to you again today, thanking you for the many blessings that you have given us. We pray that you continue to bless us throughout our lifetime, watch over us and guide us in the right direction. We pray that we stay focused on the things that we need to do in order to be saved. We need to follow the instruction that our Lord Jesus Christ came down on earth and left for us to follow. He spent many times on earth, and he also died and rose in three days, and he continued to give the instruction of what must we do in order to be saved to his disciples and teach us all nations. We pray for those <coughs> who wanted to be here with us today for some reason or another that could not be with us. We pray that we be able to share the message that Brother Brooker taught today with them and invite them out to come another day with us. We continue to pray for those who strayed away from the church, that they would come back and repent and start over and get a new start in life and keep the faith. <clears throat> we pray for those who are sick and shut in, especially in the household of faith, relatives and friends and associates that they have a quick recover. We just continue to pray for the leadership here at Susan Leroy to, that they teach and preach the gospel according to the scripture without adding or subtracting from the scripture. Just follow the instruction that the Lord Jesus Christ left them for us to follow. We just continue to pray for those who are traveling at this time, that they have a safe trip to and from the destination. And we pray that you watch over all of us until we meet here again in your namesake. Uh, we also continue to pray for those who, uh, families who lost a loved one, that they will realize and make adjustment that they have to do what they have to do in order to be saved to follow the instructions. We also come to you, O Lord Jesus Christ, asking for forgiveness of any sin that we may have committed, knowingly or not knowingly, as we continue to pray in your name, sake Jesus Christ. Amen.